so the old timers, they made overland trails, but of course would use the, the path of least resistance most of the time. Yes. So is global warming affecting the race much, or how do you feel about it? It was 50 below this year yeah. for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've seen, we've seen fluctuations, of course, over the years, but there is definitely, we never used to get rain though. Nowadays we've seen rain. I talked to a lot of, I, last year I worked for the World Wildlife Fund um, as a global, what they call me, climate witness. We've seen stuff in the last few years that we never seen before. And they're looking for people that have done a certain thing for a long time. My friend Joe Garney's my age, so he's 50 something. Um, he's never seen it rain in February until just recently. You know, he's, his father probably didn't either, but maybe his great great grandfather used to see lots of rain in February. Who knows? We don't know. We just we're just a time, we're, we're just a snapshot in time. But we certainly do see things that people have not seen in, in years past. But I can't say what what cycle we're in. But we certainly we we hate rain. I mean, when I'm out there, I much rather have snow than rain. Rain is just it's just bad. And the dogs, of course, they don't like the rain either because they're really not made for rain. They're made for the dry, the dry snow that, that peels off their clothes so easy. That's D2 and Tyrone, his half-brother. Uh, Dave is in the left swing and Dagger is uh, on the right swing. That's a father and his three sons in the first two positions of that team. The whole, the whole team is comprised of, there's Jose, a handyman, Brower, IBM. Eleanor is in wheel in this particular picture. That shows you that the leader can migrate throughout the throughout the team. Of course, we sometimes have 12 to 14 leaders uh, in the team, and they take different different times in lead. The more we can job share, the better off the dog. So I always have some good leaders way back, uh, so they can take they can take a turn or a rest. Uh, does their respect. turn as leaders depend on the terrain? terrain. I mean, there are some dogs that are better. Pearl, certain... Pearl, for instance, she loves racing uphill. <laughs> Stupid. I mean, <laughs> I never taught her. I never taught her that. You know, at one point she decided racing uphill is cool. She's a so-so dog. She's not a standout. But when we go uphill, she's ah, man, crazy, crazy, crazy. So the first, you know, the second day from from squinting at the rainy pass, she'll be in lead, dragging that team up the mountain. Something clicked at one point, as dog trainers know, you know, the golden moment, the jackpot moment, is we look for them all the time, but a lot of them happen without our knowledge. A lot of those dogs will make connections that, you know, trigger their idiosyncrasies, and we have absolutely no, we can pretend we know, but we have no idea when and how that happened. You know, I don't, I don't know when she decided racing uphill was cool. Yeah, but the key is to recognize yeah, well, so you make the best for the for the team's benefit. Kira doesn't like to get her feet wet. If I if I'm on the coast, I put Kira in lead. I know she'll go to Des Moines before she goes to to, to know. I mean, if there's water, she'll go. She'll take the biggest detour. Well, she's never going to get me in in trouble. Yet when we're on the Cuscoquim, I gotta go sometimes for miles through water. Kira will find herself way back in the team because she she will have not a choice but to run through the water. So it's just, you know, we make all those idiosyncrasies hopefully work out to the betterment of the team. And, and if we do the right thing, then we outrun Susan Butcher here. That was, um, I just leave her in there because if you, in, in my formative years, like I said, she, she certainly was, was a driving force. Um, of course, she died of leukemia a few years ago. And, um, I feel like I should leave a picture of her in my slideshow to honor her because she certainly, in part, changed the, changed the race, if nothing else, for publicity reasons. She, she, of course, brought the race. I think women have, a, for many reasons, have an advantage over us guys. Um, but she certainly put the, put the race on the map, you know, and uh, when it comes to toughness and body weight. and maybe every bit as important or maybe more important the nurturing instinct that the female tends to have more naturally uh, which of course benefits the dogs tremendously um, I think us guys were disadvantaged so um, to honor Susan I will leave the slideshow in, in, the, in the presentation all the time 
Uh, at the same time, of course, I, I think I have another guy. This guy here, he's another, <laughs> another friend of mine. This is actually one of the few pictures. That's when it's getting bad. I'm good. Um, this is one of the 91 pictures when the storm was almost over. Um, if you can't see your outstretched hand in front of your arm, uh, it's kind of nasty. <laughs> and very much like this carpet, everything in this world has a directional orientation. And our, our orientation was literally between our feet. <coughs> We'd see the scratch marks of the wind, <coughs> the direction of the blow, and the travel of the snow machines and prior dog teams and, and travelers. We would look for scratch marks, and that was our direction. That's how we that's how we navigated during this storm. Did the dogs you, know to follow those kind of? Dogs <coughs> followed me. That it's so complex when you're. This is like I said. This is good. The dogs can see here, but. It was so bad that I had to be the lead, though, and that's when Eleanor and I, we literally, I, I had a leash attached, and the, the, one of the reasons I learned so much during that particular trip was because you feel every tug, every, the sled, of course, kept falling over, the, the sled would get blown on its side, and eventually you just leave it on its side, because it strings out the team just nice, and it's going to blow over anyway, so why should you set it back up? So, that strung out the team and I pretty good, but you'd feel every time a dog goes to the bathroom or steps over a log or gets tangled up or, you know, is looking back or is shaking or rubbing his eyes on the gang line, you feel that when you're, when you're the leader, you feel that. It made me much more sympathetic, it made me a much better driver because, of course, the less, the less tug you have in the gang line, the smoother it is for everybody. So, so that storm was a... It was literally a life-changing situation for, for many people. The storm raged up and down the coast, so there was like 70-some people in this race, and everybody was affected. Some people gave up the sport, some people found religion, some people found themselves. Um, two examples, uh, one of my white guy friends, he lost his dog during that storm. He walked around all night looking for him uh, and almost died. One of my Eskimo friends lost his dogs. I said, oh shit, I lost my dogs and sat down. You know, did the Eskimo pull in your hands in your park and, and, and crossed his legs and sat for almost 24 hours. Didn't waste an energy, didn't waste an ounce of energy, sat there on the trail until it subsided and then found his dogs a few hundred yards from him. He had enough, that's Joe Garney, that's one, my friend from Teller. He had enough wherewithal to know that it doesn't matter. If it's blown like that, you're not going to find your dogs. I mean, why waste energy? Why possibly kill yourself? It's only a storm. But he's born in the wind. He was, he was raised in that sort of environment. So there he sat. I mean, nobody traveled anyway. Everybody was stuck somewhere. You know, he wasn't going to get run over by a snowmobile or anything. <laughs> he knocks in harness all the time. Yeah, the dogs are, other than they're that one 24-hour when we take a day off, a, a break, I take their harnesses off. But the rest of the time, the dogs are in harness all the time. So I shall, I shall, until I beat Swenson, he has five championships to his name, and I only have four. So until I beat him, I'll leave a picture, a little self-motivation <laughs> of him in, 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 the, in the slideshow as well. So. But we're getting close to your relief. We're getting close to the finish line. Here. And um, Safety Roadhouse, of course, is the last checkpoint. We've got 20 more miles to go. On a good year, the snow machiners can actually drive out to safety and do so in, in masses and come see the, the teams uh, go through the last checkpoint. And then, of course, you start getting to the to know, which is kind of a culture shock, culture shock, and um, took me nine years to win my first. I did around 4:17 a.m. But who's paying attention? Uh, <laughs> I studied horticulture, so one of my you, when you try to be successful, you visualize stuff, and one of my visual visualization uh, exercises was to to see the dogs get draped with the yellow roses at the finish line, because just like the Kentucky Derby, the, the winning leaders get draped with the yellow roses. And 